Lord have mercy. So um, those guys do have a ear. Oh, we got some incoming here. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what just. Uh, but anyway, this uh, this chick here, man, she's weird looking, man. She she must be hanging outside the liquor store, is what I'm thinking. Outside. Just hanging out all day. That's where she hang. Then back it up, back it up. She'll be back backing up. up. I like Antoine song better. Me too. But but that still works. It's got some pop sensibilities going on in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, a lot of weird things going in the world. One of which is the uh, sex and erotique in Kobe Hallen this afternoon. Starts up at uh, 2 o'clock. Are we really going to do that? I know uh, Clifford's in. Clifford, he's uh, he, oh yeah. There was no question, no pause. Yeah, I'll go. No, no, yeah. no hesitation whatsoever. And you know we got that list going on with you, Dave. The uh, the, the the she can get it list. She can get it list. And you gonna be if I go over there with you, I'm just gonna have to hold the uh, the uh, hard disc recorder right at your mouth the whole time as we will walk around, and it's gonna sound something like this. It's gonna be like, hang on, let me get set up here. I'm a, uh, let's just pretend that right now what I'm doing, me and Dave, we have to sex and erotic. <laughs> that sounded horrible. It's <laughs> sex and erotic in Kobe Hallen. We're there walking around. A, a sex messa. You know, not something that we see in New Orleans and Atlanta and those places. No, uh uh. uh, uh. This, so this is like a truly, you know, ec- extend your freedom. You live in Denmark, so I mean, do. I mean, really. And so we just, uh, you know, know your rights and fight for them and, and, and exert them. And that's, what, that's why we need to do this as a, as a statement to ourselves. Uh huh. We need to experience them things. Okay, so what what's the scenario you setting up now? Well, basically, oh, you saved me there, brother. That's what we you're walking here for. through the thing. We walking through the thing, and and then we got a hard disk recorder, and of course, you know, they're not gonna let JD. Hard <laughs> we got a hard disk walking through there. <laughs> Our hard disk recorder is uh, what uh, I said. Yeah. Uh huh. Our hard disk recorder discs. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. Go on. Damn it, Dave. He it's said we walking no, around with our heart. No, <laughs> no we <recorder. laughs> that, that just, Man, y'all ain't right. You didn't say it, but I thought you were going to say dick. But you, you, you did say disc. I said I'm talking about a hard disc recorder that we do interviews on. All man. right, go on. What do you think? Just because it's sex and erotic, you thought I said hard something else. You can go on. Almighty. So it's going to sound like this. It's going to be like, it's going to be like, hey, Dave, what you see over there? Little tight, tight, tight. Uh, <laughs> would you, uh, would you? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, what about that one? A little tight, tight, tight. Would you do her? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> and I'd be like, now look there. That one's dressed real fancy, ain't she? Ooh. Yeah. You like it? And you think she's cute? little tight, tight, tight. But Dave, that's not a, that's not a woman. That's a man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right, let's let's walk <laughs> over. Let's walk over here. All right, excuse me, sir. How you doing? Huh? Y- yeah, yeah. I just we're from the Mad Dog and Dave Radio Program, and we're out here at Sex and Erotic and Kobe Helen uh, interviewing some of you. Now you've been riding the Sibian all day long. Is that correct? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, what was the first thing that you did when you got off of the Sibian? <laughs> Okay, oh. but was it a good time? <laughs> okay, and you, and while you were riding the Sibian, and of course the Sibian is a, is like a, an, an orgasm machine, correct? Okay, well, well, well was it a good ride? <laughs> a, a really good ride? <laughs> uh, I mean, will you do it again? <laughs> okay, thanks, uh, thanks for being interviewed with us. Uh, thanks, thanks for letting us interview you. I appreciate it. Who? All right, listen, Dave, should we go over here? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Walk over here for a second. Hey, how's you doing? We're from the Mad Dog and Dave Radio Program on Christiania Radio. Um, what's your name? Little Tight, Tight, Tight. Okay, Lord, have mercy. Your voice is kind of low, isn't it? Ooh. Now, what do you think about my co-host? Ooh. <laughs> okay, and Dave, what do you think about her? All right, bro. Okay, you guys want to get together? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll talk to you all later, man. I'm going to go home to my wife, Mrs. Mad Dog. You're listening to the Mad Dog and Dave radio program. It's Christiania Radio 90.4 FM. So uh, with no further ado, I'd like to introduce to everybody. Jim, you got to come over here and get in a mic. Yeah, take, you got you to come over here and talk to me just for a second. This is my former employer, Mr. Jim Tract, owner of Adroit Records, first time in Denmark. Welcome to the show, Jim. Nice to have you here with me, and what a great thing it is to see you after 23 years. It's my pleasure. What I wanted to get in on there is that, uh, of course, 
Uh, you used to work for Richard Perry, who is the producer of more hits over more time than any other uh, recording artist in history. Or rec- record any other producer. Record producer. Yeah, you had to get right up in there, Jim. Record you producer. There you go. And, uh, Jim, you, you um, during my time at the studio as an assistant and as a gopher, I remember you getting three, uh, three famous daughters together, and it was a project called Child Syndrome. And it was one of my jobs was to find out if the studio was going to be open at night so you could work on that project. So we could sneak in. And these three girls were none other than... There were four at the start. Okay. Cass Elliott's daughter was in there, too. Okay. Mama Cass. Mama Cass from her, the Mamas and the Papas. Right. Her daughter was part of it. So there was, there was China Phillips. Right. Michelle Phillips' daughter. John and Michelle Phillips from and the then, Mamas uh, and Papas. And then Wilson, Brian Wilson's daughter, Carney. Uh-huh. And, and her sister, And her Wendy. sister, Wendy. Right. And and together, and it made the dysfunctional family picnic look like a day at Disney World. <laughs> I can imagine that is a quite a group of parents too, oh with a whole list of issues and luggage. Uh. And so, what that must have been like to uh, look after those people's kids? It was odd because when we started, well, let's say what it ended up being. It ended up becoming Wilson Phillips, right? And Wilson Phillips sold eleven million records. Across the world. I wouldn't want to have to carry them through customs. <laughs> so it's a lot easier getting over here with... Uh, with 100. With, with, with Vince and Shelly Tackett. And, yeah. And our good friend from uh, Lou Bell. Was it Lou Bell, Tennessee, you were from, Craig? Let, we're going to get to you in a minute. <laughs> but anyway, Jim, listen. Yes, yeah, Scott. What, what, what do you think about Denmark? Denmark is wonderful. Okay. Do you think so? No. Seriously, it's really wonderful. Um... And Christiana, it's like, well, I'm still processing. Okay, I remember when I uh, when you first got here, the day after, uh, I took all four of you out and kind of gave you a tour around, mm-hmm. and then we were kind of quiet walking back to the car in the clown car limo. Yeah, that's right. They all piled into the little Ford there, and uh, I remember uh, I remember thinking to myself, wow, they're awful quiet, all of them, you know. And then I I mentioned to you, I was like, well, I hope I didn't bore you too bad, and you were like, God, no, it's fascinating. Absolutely. And I forget what that feeling must have was like. It was 21 years ago. I had that same. Oh my God, can this really be? What in Hollywood? No, here. Well, oh, when you came here. Yeah, <laughs> in Hollywood, I was also pinching myself like Kenneth on the Thirty Rock show. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but so yeah, fascinated. You still continue to be about. Yeah, anything new is an opportunity to broaden your outlook and horizons and your understanding and you know look at things a little differently than you're used to when you're stuck in your own cocoon yeah so people here couldn't be friendlier the fact that everybody speaks english is delightful yeah it makes it so easy yeah asking for directions here wasn't that easy no but (laughs) everywhere else it works well that's cool well that's cool yeah that's all right. And you, you you went over to Sweden. Did you see any immediate differences between Sweden and Denmark? Yes, you can't buy sweatshirts there. Okay, yeah, you needed to find a, a sweatshirt for your daughter that has the Swedish flag on it. That's right. And you couldn't find that in Sweden. Couldn't find any sweatshirts with anything. Okay. Well, take her back a, a Danish flag on her on a sweatshirt. And tell her it's Sweden. Yeah, take her back a Bavar Christiania sweatshirt. Oh, yeah. That'll make her very cool with her friends. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I, you you've you've done remixes for for Rod Stewart, for Paul Simon, for Donna Summer. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that uh, that I see. I find it amazing after such an illustrious. I mean, is it not you that took the obscure song "Fire" by Bruce Springsteen and, yeah, and yeah, brought yeah. it to the Pointer Sisters? Yeah, um, Bruce used to play at a club where I worked when I was younger. Okay, it was kind of like his home away from home, and. Uh, Fire was one of the songs that he did a lot, which the audience participated in and loved, but he had never recorded it. And some obscure, he gave it to, I can't even remember who, but some obscure punk artist had it on his album, which allowed us to record it without getting a first use license. Okay. Uh, So we didn't have to deal with him at all. And... Was it the same tempo and everything that the Pointer Sisters ended up doing? No, it, we did it a little slower so that they could be a little sexier. Um, and we added that big pause for Romeo and Juliet. You know, yeah, just, Samson we, we tried, and Delilah. Exactly. We Should tried, we hear it in the background, Sammy, if you'll control this here? We just tried to make it a little, a little sexier and... Uh, and more fluid, I think, is the word, for radio, because we were looking for a radio hit, you know, okay. that's all we were looking for. 
but the way it really started was I went, there's a famous club called the Bluebird Cafe, and it's where all writers aspire to end up. If you are regular at the Bluebird, you are an accepted, credentialed yeah. writer in Nashville. And believe me, there are a lot of writers in Nashville. I can imagine. I can see that Craig, Craig, Craig's done some... Uh, Is that Colin? Yeah, that's Colin. Colin, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put him on hold. I'll get back to him. Yeah, good. That Jim track's a little bit more important than Colin Farrell, right? I'm now. here. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so no, anyway, no, listen, yeah. it's a great story. So I go to this club, and I'm blown away by what I see, what I hear. And one of the things that blew me away was Craig Monday was there. I'd never seen him, met him, knew nothing about him, and he sang a song called "Heaven Is a Small Town." And when he got to the chorus, the crowd gasped as okay. one. <gasps> and then burst into applause. So they're applauding the hook of a song, and I'm going, I've died and gone to heaven. Wow. These are my people. They're listening. Yeah. yeah. And not only are they listening, but they're hearing. There's a big difference, and they appreciated what they heard, and it was just, it, that was a pivotal moment in my life. Wow. So the Seriously. title of the track is true. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it's a beautiful song. So how long have you been based out of Nashville now with Detroit Records? Almost four years, a little, just about four years. So you've been in, you've been in Nashville for four years. Now, now Shelly Tackett, Craig Monday, and Vince Melamed, they all live in, in Nashville as well. Yes. Okay, great. So I have a little Nashville music quiz for all of you. You each are going to get five questions. And whoever answers the most questions wins a special prize at the end of this. Cause I'm betting on Vince. Okay, but you're going to go first, Jim, okay? How much? Don't look at my screen whenever you oh, do. Oh, man, I'm no good at this. Go ahead. All right, but this is... Ask me where I live. I know that. Specific questions to the Nashville music life. Are you ready? Yes. And it's, it's multiple choice, so just let me read all the choices before you choose which one. Okay. Ryan Bingham and T-Bone Burnett won an Oscar for the song The Weary Kind. It appeared in the film, A, The Blind Side. Brad Paisley recently had a bad fall on stage. That's kind of funny because we do something here at the show that's called uh, Celebrity Collapse of the Week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Celebrity Collapse of the Week. That's right. So uh, apparently. Celebrity Collapse of the Week. We, we have a different celebrity that collapsed this week, but uh, this, this refers to a former <laughs> Go faster, Scott. Faster. Celebrity there collapse we go. of the week. Where Brad Paisley recently had a bad fall on stage when performing his song Alcohol. <laughs> yeah, what do you got to say to that? When we need him. Oh, man. Well, so basically, <laughs> he fell down because A, he stepped on little Jimmy Dickens and tripped. B, he stepped on Justin Moore and tripped. C, he was sober and singing about drinking. <laughs> I like that one. And D, he was scratching a tick bite, or E, none of the above. It's a trick question. I'm going with C. C, he was sober and singing about drinking. Checking you now. Because he's a father, and he's married. And